Hi, welcome to today's video about antimatter, which is the best fuel uh, possible. It's an overview of our antiparticles. Um, they have opposite charge compared to normal particles. For example, at the top left, that's the electron. Its uh, antiparticle is the positron. Antiparticle of the proton is the antiproton. And the neutron has also an antiparticle, that's the antineutron. And if a particle and its antiparticle come together, you get uh, annihilation, annihilation and conversion to energy. This is a picture of the electron-positron annihilation, which produces uh, gamma photons. Uh, this equation E equals mc squared gives you an idea about the energy that you can uh, produce. Uh, C is uh, about 300,000 kilometers per second, that's the speed of light. So C squared is a very big number. So uh, this uh, equation says that energy and mass are equivalent, in, and if you manage to convert a little bit of mass to, into energy, uh, because of the C square uh, number, you get a lot of energy from very little mass. Matter. This is a Feynman diagram. It describes uh, the annihilation and the creation of the electron uh, positron. Uh, y axis is uh, space, x axis is uh, time. But at the left side, you can see the annihilation of a positron and the electron. You get a gamma photon. Uh, later, this photon can decay, and you get a new pair of a positron and an electron. Uh, this is a picture from the discovery of the positron, E+. It was discovered in 1932 by Carl Anderson. This picture is of a cloud chamber. You can see the positron which is uh, deflected by a magnetic field. And the change of the direction uh, tells you it's a positron, not an electron, because the electron would take um, another path. In the middle, you can see a 6 mm thick uh, lead plate. Uh, one source for the positron is the decay of uh, potassium 40 isotope. Uh, this decay type is very rare. This is the reaction uh, potassium 40 decays to argon 40. You get a positron and a neutrino. Uh, the human body produces uh, from this potassium-40 process, decay process, about 4,000 uh, positrons per day, and this is uh, insignificant. This another positron effect event um, was detected with the Fermi telescope. It's a terrestrial gamma ray flash in a thunderstorm. It's a nat natural phenomena. It's another phenomena that produces a positron. This is the supernova 1987A, SN 1987A, at a distance of 168,000 light years uh, in the large Mag Magellanic cloud. Magellanic cloud. This image is from the James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, this is another source for the positron. Um, this is the reaction uh, electron anti neutrino, and a proton uh, react to a positron and a neutron. This is a nice animation of a black hole. You can see the bright ring. That's the accretion disk. Uh, the material in this disk, uh, due to friction, uh, gets very hot and that starts uh, to glow. There's a mechanism called Hawking radiation. It is not uh, measured yet, but it's a theory that says um, you, it is possible that the uh, pair of uh, a part particle and its antiparticle can be created. And one of those uh, particles can uh, manage to leave the black hole. For example, an uh, electron and a uh, positron. So this means uh, over time um, a black hole can, could evaporate. But this takes about 10 to the 68 to 10 to the 103 years. Therefore, comparison, the age of the universe is 13.8 billion years, so in the order of 10 to the 10 years. This is a picture of um, dark matter clumps in the universe. This is a picture is made from data from the Very Large Telescope. And the positron could uh, theoretically be a decay product of dark matter. This is the PET, the Positron Emission Tomography, for tumor diagnosis. This is a very important application for positrons. You can use the isotope fluorine-18, a source uh, for the positrons. Uh, this can be produced in a cyclotron. And fluorine 18 has a half life of 110 minutes. This is the particle antiproton. It consists of uh, two up quarks, up antiquarks. 
is a charge of plus um, minus two thirds, and the down antiquark with a charge of plus one third. The antiproton was discovered by Emilio Segre and Owen Chamberlain in 1955. It is a part of the cosmic radiation. Uh, measurements of the mass of the antiproton show that it is, has a mass of 18, 1836 electron masses that is exactly the same mass as a proton. This is an animation of the Van Allen radiation belts. There is an inner belt and an outer belt. Uh, this consists of charged particles and there is a plasma pose, which is a barrier for high energy electrons. Uh, this belt could be a, is a potential source for antiprotons because it, um, they are dirt in a higher concentration. And theoretically, you could use uh, magnetic collectors to collect these antiprotons. This is one device, um, the panning trap. You uh, can use this trap um, to collect um, antiprotons from the Van Allen belt. Because the production of antiprotons is very energy intensive, the panning trap has an electric field and a magnetic field, and together can store the antiproton particles in, in the center. This is Elena, that's the extra low energy antiproton experiment at CERN, the 30 meter big ring, and a antiproton detector, a decelerator. This is an um, animation of the antihydrogen. It consists of an antiproton. You can see the three antiquarks in the center. The antiproton is uh, orbited by the positron. The first antihydrogen atom was uh, produced in 1995. It has, like the normal hydrogen, 1s and 2s orbitals. And the symmetry to normal hydrogen was confirmed in the year 2016. Um, this is how you make antihydrogen uh, by sending an antiproton beam through into uh, positronium. Positronium is a pair of a positron and an electron that orbit each other. And with this method, uh, millions of uh, antihydrogen atoms were made from the years uh, 2002 to 2004. This artist concept of an antimatter rocket it can reach, pot reach potentially a speed of 10% uh, of the speed of light. Um, but at these speeds, uh, you, even a small, uh, tiny uh, uh, dust grain uh, could destroy this rocket. That's why you need extra uh, shield against dust. Alternative is uh, to make uh, many small space probes. And um, some of them will be destroyed and some of them make it to the, desti the destination. That's another strategy. And with an uh, antimatter rocket, you could... Uh, potentially reach uh, Proxima Centauri in uh, 42 years. This is an artist's image of a Big Bang, a first moment after the Big Bang, which happened 13.8 billion years ago. There are two phenomena in nature that uh, point to the Big Bang, that support the Big Bang theory. One is the cosmic background radiation, that's the afterglow of the Big Bang. And the second is the expansion of the universe. Um, there's an imbalance between matter and antimatter. Um, over 99.999% is matter. Antimatter makes a very, very tiny uh, percentage. This is called the baryon asymmetry. And the re reason for this phenomenon is uh, unknown. This is a picture of the simulation of the Higgs event. That's a um, Higgs boson produced by a proton proton collision and then the decay of the Higgs boson. Uh, there's a theory of uh, dark photons. They could, could be a force carrier for dark matter. Um, humanity has, uh, until now, has just uh, barely made enough uh, antimatter to warm a cup of coffee. So, um, the antimatter science is uh, at the very beginning. But we live in a time of accelerating rate of uh, scientific discoveries. That's why I think that there will be uh, breakthroughs in the near future that will open up new possibilities and that will make uh, things possible that seem impossible today. Um, that was today's video about antimatter, best fuel in, um, that we have. If you're interested, you can check out the links in the description field. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.